Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to take a look at using the show run command to determine the latest changes to a Cisco device. So this has happened to all of us. You get a ticket for an issue on the network and you find out that at 5 p.m. last night the network went down for the users at site 1. So you get on to router 1 and you take a look and you notice that the WAN interface has been administratively shut down. And you think to yourself, well, I didn't do that. So how can I quickly determine who did that and when? There's a number of good ways to do this if you've set up logging and have a logging server, you can search the logging server, but just out of the box, probably the method you're going to use is to just take a look at the local device's logs. And that's a good method. It should show you when the last change was made and if the person was authenticated, who made that change. Now the problem with the log is, is that it can get filled up and if the change was made quite a while ago or if you have some repeating messages like uh, CDP messages or stuff like that fills up the log, it'll push that out because it is a buffer that will wrap on itself. The other thing is, is if somebody has the administrative rights to make changes on your device, they probably have the right to issue the clear log command and that might have destroyed your quote unquote evidence at that point. While most engineers are aware of looking in the log, do you know that you can actually use the show run command to give you a quick and dirty that will show you the last time that the running configuration was changed, kind of got an asterisk by that, we'll touch on that in a little more detail later, as well as when the last time the running configuration was copied to the startup configuration, which going forward for the lack of brevity, I'm just going to simply refer to as writing the config. Here we are in R1 and we issue the show run command. It builds a configuration, tells us how big the configuration is, and then the next couple of lines are what we're looking at. Here it tells us that the last configuration change occurred at about 3.12 on Monday, November 1st, and it was attributed to a user logged in with the Packet Lab username credentials. And then we can see here the next line says that the NVRAM config was last updated at about 12.25 on the same day by a user logged in with the the username knock credentials. Okay, so let's take these in reverse order. The NVRAM config last updated. That's when the configuration was last written. It's copy, run, start, write, whatever. So that's the last time that the running configuration was written into the startup configuration. This first line here, the last configuration change, technically does not show you when the last change was made. What it's actually showing you is the time that the last user exited configuration mode. And we'll see this covered in more detail on a slide in the future, but basically anytime that you go into configuration mode and then exit out of configuration mode, it's going to create this entry here. The catch is that you could go into configuration mode, quickly exit back out, make no configuration change, but it's still going to be recorded here. The thing is, is that most of the time when you're in configuration mode, you're there too make configuration changes. And these two bits of information come in really handy when we're troubleshooting. So back to our example, uh, we had an issue on R1 that occurred at 5 p.m. the previous night. We log into R1 and we take a look at this and we can see, well, let's just say that we see that at 5 p.m. there was a configuration change made and it was made by Packet Lab. So we're like, hey, we got to get a hold of this guy and find out what configuration change he made. The other cool thing is that you can take these two pieces of information and, and look at them really quickly. And in this case, we could tell that although Although Packet Lab made a change, he or she did not write the change. So the configuration change was made. The last time that this was written was about three hours prior. So we know that the starting configuration does not contain the change, at least the last change that was made here by Packet Lab. Now we do have to consider that if this was um, instead of you know just hours before, if this was months or a year before, that any number of configuration changes could have been made in the meantime. They just could have made the changes and not written the configuration. So you're not going to have 100% absolute certainty that the difference between the startup configuration and the running configuration is going to be all due to this single change made by Packet Lab at, you know, we're pretending that this says 5 o'clock yesterday. If they're pretty close, then there's a good chance that that difference might be the only difference. But keep in mind that simply doing a, a difference between these two configuration files may not tell you exactly what the last change was. Okay, and this comes with actually a pretty big caveat. You have to have an authoritative clock on your device and I'm not going to go into setting the clock or what the authoritative clock is there is a lesson on setting the clock manually and also running NTP take a look at those but if you do a show clock and you see this asterisk what that's telling you is that the clock is not authoritative and if it's in this state where it's not authoritative if you do a copy run start or write and then you go ahead and do a show run you're not going to see those two lines of configuration they're not truly configuration but those two lines in the running config it'll tell you how big it is but then it will just drop in 
into the actual configuration. So basically if you do a show clock and there's an asterisk, you're going to have to remedy that. Otherwise, if there's a, if it's blank, you're golden. If there's a dot or a period, then you're golden as well. And all that authoritative means is that the device is reasonably sure that the time that it's been set to is accurate. So it could get that through NTP. Again, this is not going to be a setting the clock lesson. So if you don't know what NTP is, uh, again, check out the videos. Or if you don't have NTP, then you may have to actually manually set the clock. The command for that is actually a privileged exec command, which is clock set, followed by the hours, minutes, seconds, and then the date. Go ahead and hit enter. Now when I do a show clock, I can see that that asterisk is gone. So now we do have quote unquote authoritative clock. Now if I write the configuration and I do a show run, we can see that it has shown up as having occurred at 1310, which is just a few seconds after we set the clock. So this is something that can be a big caveat and can be kind of weird when you're looking at it and be like, well, I don't understand why this device is not keeping this information, whereas, you know, other devices on my network are. And this comes into uh, play, especially if you're not running NTP, if you're just manually setting clocks in your network. But keep it in mind, if you don't see that in the running configuration, then there's a good chance that it could be a clocking issue. As mentioned earlier, the last configuration change actually shows when the last user exited configuration mode, regardless of whether or not they made any changes. So here we can see we issued the show run command. You can see the last change was made by packet lab so now we're logging in and as my arch nemesis evil packet we log in and we go into configuration mode and then instead of making a configuration changes we just go ahead and hit our control z to exit and now when i do a show run it's going to show that the last configuration change was made by the dastardly evil packet at this time if you just go into configuration mode and then break out it's going to show that you made a configuration change so don't go off on your coworker when you see his name here until you've made sure that he has actually made a change change and if you have network auditing and stuff going on like that in your network where you're responsible for any changes make sure that you're not going into configuration mode and then breaking out for no reason because it will show up as making a change and taking a look at a log is a great way for finding out when the last change was made there are some limitations to that and one of them is if the log is filled up say the last change was made months ago and there's months of logging data in there it will have pushed that out the other thing is is that you can actually clear the log okay so in this case the last configuration change was made by evil packet so I log into the router and I say let me take a look at the loggy messages in this case I'm just filtering for configured keyword and I see that at this time evil packet had logged in from router 2 on the VTY line 0 and made a change got him smoking gun nail this fool well evil packets a little smarter than that so right after he did evil and made this change what he does is he just issues a clear log command clears the logging buffer and now if we go take a look in the logs for that configured keyword, we don't get any output matches. So he's effectively covered his tracks. But being the smart engineers that we are, we know that we can take a look at the show running configuration and see, hey, you may have cleared the log, but you did not clear this. So I know that you did some evil at this time on this date. And I don't want to insult your intelligence by stating the obvious, but the username is only going to be recorded if there's been authentication with the username. So in this case, uh, I'm on the console line and I'm not logged in because the console line has not been set up for login local or tack acts or anything like that so if I go ahead and do a show users I can see that I'm logged in but I'm not using a username so if I go into configuration mode and shut down the interface to the WAN then what happens is when we take a look at the show run and this is the same thing with the log it's gonna show when the last change was made but it's not gonna have a name on there so you're gonna to want to keep this in mind not just for this command but for your security in general a lot of times the console port does not have any login on it because it's supposedly only gonna be used by people that have physical access and it's only gonna be used in emergencies so a lot of engineers don't set it up with authentication if they do it's usually going to be a local account that's well known to everybody the account of last resort anybody that logs into there and makes a change you're not going to be able to track them with the accuracy that you would say if you had a tacax plus account that was a tied down to your specific username Another place where I've seen this is when they've got modems connected to auxiliary ports. I see the same thing where there's either no authentication whatsoever in so much as if you can get into that port, then you have access to the device or it is using a uh, local username account, which is a real security risk, especially if you have a disgruntled employee, because if you have out of band dial in management, he just dials into the device, goes ahead and does a uh, write erase on the device and jumps out. And the only way you're going to be able to track him down is if you have the phone records. And like I said, this is not specific to this command, but keep this in mind when you're designing your 
security policies for your devices. And if you do have an account of last resort, such as a local username, password combination, make sure you change it on a regular basis. It does get to be a pain in the ass if you have a ton of devices, but that pain of the ass is going to be a whole lot less than when somebody comes in from the outside world, hacks your box, and melts your network. Okay, well, I'll get down off my security soapbox right now, and let's go ahead and take a look at this in action on the CLI. Not much of a topology here. We've got R1 and R2 connected by a serial link, and we'll be doing most of our work on R1. Okay, so what we've got set up is we've got R1 and R2, and on R1, if we do a show run, include username. We have three user accounts set up. We've got Packet Lab, Knock, and Evil Packet. As you can see here, we just reloaded this box. We're running on Dynamips. Let's go ahead and do a show clock. And here we can see that the clock shows March 1st, 2002. And if you viewed my setting the clock manually or with NTP lessons, you'll recognize this as one of the two epic times, which can be starting with either 1993 or 2002. In other words, this device has no idea what time it is. If we do a show clock detail, we can see that it doesn't have a time source. So the reason why this is important to us is that it's not going to record any configuration changes or writing of the configuration into the running configuration. So if we do a show run right now, you can see here that it builds a configuration that shows us what the size of the current configuration is and it starts writing on the configuration. So this could just be an artifact from us having just brought the device up. We do a show version include uptime. You can see it's been up for 41 minutes. If we go ahead and write the configuration, and I'll do a copy, run, start. Going forward, I'm just going to use the write or WR, which is short for write, to do this. And we write the configuration. Now we would expect that when we do a show run here, that we would see that the configuration had been written at whatever the time is on the device right now. We look and it's still building the configuration, doesn't show that information. Let's go one step further, go into configuration mode, and we're just gonna jump right back out. And now if we do a show run, so it's showing in the log that it was configured from the console by console, not logged in with any user credentials. If I hit show run, think, 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 here we go, same thing. So this is a caveat that I had mentioned in the slides that if you don't have authoritative clock that your device is not going to record this information in its running configuration. So what we're gonna do is we're going to issue the clock set command and it's actually 1748 on the 1st of November, 2010. Now if I do a show clock, It'll tell me, hey, you've updated the clock. We don't see the asterisk, and we can go one better and just add the detail keyword on there. And we can see that the time is user configuration sourced. So now let's go ahead and write the configuration and then do a show run. And if I haven't filled your head full of lies, we should see that the configuration was last updated at 1748 and 17 seconds on Monday, the 1st of November, 2010. So our clock is authoritative. So now it is actually writing this and we can go one step further, go into configuration mode and we'll just break back out again. And now if I do a show run, we should see that the last configuration changed just what a minute later there you go actually less than a minute later so it is important to have an authoritative clock again this is not a lesson on setting the clock on your device if you're running ntp you should be golden if you're not then you may have to manually update your clock and i guess we killed two birds with one stone here let me go ahead and go into configuration mode i'm going to configure loopback interface zero and i'm going to configure the ip address and then I'm going to break out. Now if I do a show run, I should see the last configuration made was me. Well, I'm not logged in, but we can see that it just happened just recently. What I wanted to show you was now if you go into configuration mode again, and then you just break back out, then do a show run. And let's look at this right here. We can see that after we created loopback zero, that was at uh, 5.50 and 10 seconds. I had gone into configuration mode, made no changes whatsoever. Just said, ooh, wait, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Jump back out. But it still shows up as a configuration change. So like I mentioned in the slides, be careful with this for two reasons. One, if it's you that have gone in and not made a change, it will show up as a change in the show run configuration. So if you're the one that did this, you might get a knock on the door the next day saying, what were you doing? In router one at 1750 last night just be aware that it will treat this as a configuration change because it's simply looking at the last time that somebody exited configuration mode the other thing is if 
this was a co-worker of yours and you're doing troubleshooting and you go pound on the door screaming at them sure that they made changes to your router be aware that it could be the case that they did not make a change that this was just them getting into configuration mode and then breaking back out again 